Well, good morning and welcome to uh, Intersec 2023. I'm uh, Howard Leadham. I'm the managing director of ESID here in, uh, in Dubai. And I'm one of the interviewers for the uh, ISJ industry interviews at Intersec. And I'm very fortunate today to be sitting here with Mr. Salam Bouri, who's the vice president, general manager, and head of Middle East and East Africa, secure land communications for Airbus, defense, and space. So, Salim, welcome to Intersec, welcome to Dubai. Thank you, Art. my pleasure to be here with you. Um, first of all, that you've got a very uh, long and impressive title, and, I, and I, so I've got to ask you, how does one become the vice president of secure land communications in Airbus? I'm originally actually an aerospace engineer, uh, so uh, an aviation fan, but I've been working uh, over my career in uh, different fields, mainly in security and critical communications. So the best way for me to mix the, the aviation fan part and the communication experience was secure land communication with Airbus, so here I am. That's great, that's great. Thanks for the explanation. Well, we uh, recently, particularly in the region, uh, I know that uh, uh, your Airbus Secure Land Communications uh, were at FIFA 2022 and they were at Expo 2020. And I'd like you to talk about your involvement of, of those two events and the difference between the two for the application of your systems there. Yes, uh, so as Airbus Secure Land Communication, we've been present, and as Airbus Group, we've been present in the region since more than 25 years and 50 years for some of the products. And we've been working for the critical communication part for all the, the, the governments, all the countries in the regions for varying times. So when they contacted us and asked us to support specifically these extremely critical events that are both Dubai Expo 2020 and uh, FIFA 2022, uh, we are extremely uh, proud and happy to support them with all the critical communication requirements. Uh, these are extremely emblematic pro uh, events that require all the products to work seamlessly and all the teams to be able to communicate and coordinate the activity seamlessly from an organizational point of view, obviously, but also from a security point of view. You have all the people that are behind the scenes, the police, the firefighters, the health uh, professionals that are also on the clock on call all the time and these people communicate and we've been supporting them. Uh, it was extremely critical. So the commonality of course is this com these events are critical, highly visible, so you cannot afford to not do it right from the first time. It has to work perfectly. There is no room for mistakes. So the system has to be dimensioned on the best way to make sure that there is no hint and that it works smoothly and that everyone can communicate and coordinate. Uh, the big difference obviously is the durations. Uh, one month for the World Cup, which was a lot of work for the team, six months for the Expo. You do that six by six. Uh, a bit bigger, but different. So one is more tension, the other the tension is spread. But at the end of the day, the usage of the systems is the same, is to make sure all the uh, first responders, coordinators, organization committee, and security teams, uh, including the police and the health professional, can coordinate. And this year, Especially for these two events, we've introduced also a new generation of products, uh, Tactile and Agnet, which is not only about voice communication, but also about integration of other systems. CCTV, uh, global coordination, exchange of information, exchange of video and imaging. So uh, it was really a very innovative usage of the technology. We've been lucky enough to have the trust of our partners and customers to introduce this new generation of products. And it was uh, absolutely stunning and perfectly used, so we're extremely proud to play the little role in this success of these two major events. And, and just roughly, uh, what was the size of the Airbus team that was involved in, in each event? Just, just roughly. So between the people that were in the field, either in Dubai or in Doha, and in the different organizations and centrally for a product, we had almost 50, person, uh, 50 people always on it. Uh, it was going around. It was extremely interesting because it was also... So these people come with the experience. We've been working and supporting massive events in the past, uh, but this was a new generation of massive and it was extremely interesting. We've been also, the teams have been supporting uh, the Olympics, uh, in the Winter Olympics in China also at the beginning of the year, but also the Formula One, the one in Dubai, uh, in Abu Dhabi, sorry, which is the end of the year, uh, the one in Bahrain, the one in Saudi. So a lot of experience on supporting these unique events. But again, every event is unique. The evolution of the environment around it is also always different. And, uh, and we've been able to, uh, to secure this 
especially also thanks to the expertise of the of the security forces in all these countries. So a big thank you to, uh, to Dubai police, uh, to Qatar Ministry of Interior also for their fantastic work on this. That's great. Thank, thank you for that. Now, when uh, people either look at your badges or they hear the word Airbus, they don't typically think of uh, secure land communications. They think of the A320, the A380. So um, what I'd like to ask you is how difficult was it for Airbus to pivot into uh, a secure land communications? So it's, 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 not like, it's not a new activity for Airbus. Uh, Airbus is a big group, so everyone is familiar with the commercial aircraft. Uh, we all love the 380 here. Uh, we have also helicopters, satellites, but we have also a lot of activity around defense and security, so military aircraft, uh, critical security, critical information, cyber security. Uh, we've been always present part of Airbus. The name used to be in the past actually Cassidian, uh, but Airbus as a brand is much powerful. So uh, we are today extremely proud. And this gives us also the capability of integrating many different systems. If you work with Airbus Group uh, through secure communication or through other division, it will give you access to the full portfolio of the group. And we'll have the capability of integrating all the systems together. And together with Tactilon, right now with Agnet, we have working activities, integrating uh, satellite imagery, integrating cyber security offering, integrating uh, uh, communications and coordinations of airport operations, of airline operations. So this is also a massive advantage we offer to our customers and partners. When you work with a division, when you work with an entity, you get access to the whole portfolio of the group. And if you are working in different segments, uh, this provides you a unique perspective and a unique solution approach to support your global operation on the scale of an airline, on the scale of a city or on the scale of a country. Okay, thank you. That's very clear. Now, during your response, you did mention Tactilon uh, and I'd also like you to talk about Tetra, but can you just talk about the two systems and uh, how, 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 how you use them and how they're integrated? Sure. So uh, Tetra, Tetrapol are actually one of our historical activities. These are the narrowband voice communication. This is the most secure voice communication system you can find today. Uh, we've been providing this. We, are, we keep evolving them. We are working today. We have a Tetra Plus uh, product development with new solutions. Uh, what is Tactilon? Tactilon is actually about taking this technology, making them hybrid. So adding an additional layer of applications, adding integration with 4G, 5G, 6G. So we'll provide you, thanks to the Tactilon portfolio, not only access to the Tetra and Tetrapol, but also access to the complete 5G, 6G ecosystem, including applications, including new products. And we have, as an example, the TB4, which is a base station that is on the same times Tetra and 5G, uh, but also all the application layer, which is the most critical part today in these new generations. So in a, in a nutshell, Tactilon is the new generation of critical communication systems that will bring hybrid capabilities. I see. And now we've, we've spoken about uh, obviously huge events such as FIFA and Expo, but uh, what about scalability? And, and, and specifically, what about scalability down? How, how far can you scale it down so that, so that the end user can be much smaller than somebody like FIFA 2022, for instance? So we, we, that, that, that's an important point. We work actually on different sizes of networks. So we have today, we are more known for providing nationwide networks. We provide uh, nationwide game calls for the UAE, for Saudi, for Qatar, for France, Spain and different other countries. But we work also a lot with industries and special events. So we have also the capability of scale it up to the level of one metro line. We provide the Dubai metro, for example, uh, one airport, one city, or even one compound. We work a lot with oil and gas uh, companies around the world, including Aramco or Adnoc. And we have this capability of scaling, not only from a hardware point of view, but we are having also a new virtualized solution today. So we can even virtualize the solution and provide you a virtual, uh, virtual secure network. So you're not gonna get the infrastructure, yet you are gonna have access to the service. We will host it, we will operate it, and this will be extremely scalable can count up to, starting from 20, 25 users, up to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of users. That's great, that's very clear. Um, you also mentioned earlier on, you mentioned 5G, and I'd like to talk about that a bit, because, because obviously 
uh, there's been a lot of controversy over the Huawei 5G and some countries not wanting it, other countries do. And so um, was Airbus already in 5G or did it, did, it, did it see a niche and then come in? And also, where does Airbus fit into the 5G picture? 5G indeed is a very uh, specific uh, technology and a specific approach in the sense that it will bring massive connectivity capabilities. The pipe to exchange data is becoming much bigger, which will lead a lot of people to connect more things on the networks. So we have the traditional connectivity, we have the YouTube and so on, but we have also more and more critical usage. Some state will connect security information. Uh, government will exchange information that are more related to their uh, home protections and so forth. So the need for protection is much bigger than before. It's not anymore about small connectivity, it's about highly secured and sometimes critical connectivity. So it's much more sensitive for a country or for a customers or for a government to choose the right partners while protecting his interest and protecting his safety and the access to his data. Uh, you have different vendors from the infrastructure part. We at Airbus, what we saw here is a new need for securing this data, for securing this interconnection, for securing this connectivity. And this is where we've always been present. So our role here and where we jump in is with the application layer and the core part, which is the part will come with the data, the sensitive data, the part that will come with the interconnection to very sensitive systems, including some stand or own security systems, being the communication that we provide, being the satellite that we provide, being the aircraft that we provide. So we decided to jump in here to support our customers, our government, our home nations, but also other countries on securing that layers. And this is where we are. So we work with different suppliers, we work with different partners, we interconnect with different, uh, I would say, equipment manufacturers. But where we are and our power here is to play the role of security prime, security integrator, and making sure we protect the data part, we protect the application layer part. So this is where we are. We've been doing this, we've been already uh, selected in some country, we just announced a couple of months ago uh, the selection for securing the whole future network of the French government for all internal public safety. We are extremely proud of doing that. It will be a mix of Tetrapol, a mix of 5G, and the application layer will be fully secured by Airbus. And this is the value we bring to the market, and this is what we are willing to do with, uh, with all the countries that will have this massive challenge. 5G is an opportunity, but only if we secure it and if we use it the right way. Yeah, that's uh, very well put. Well, look, Salim, uh, I want to thank you for uh, taking part in the ISJ interviews uh, today. And uh, I wish you and Airbus the very best of uh, Intersex and the very best of uh, 2023. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you very much.